of in the PG department of uh, social work, self-financing at Madras School of Social Work. And uh, today uh, we are going to deal about one of the interesting uh, topics uh, which has been uh, spoken by many of us, um, especially during the rise in the pandemic. The self-care is something which has become very important. And I'm really delighted that our department uh, is organizing a workshop on this. And um, probably when you look into the uh, flow of the workshop, so it has been scheduled for six days. And today I'll be doing uh, the introduction to self-care. So I'll be introducing the key variables related to self-care, do's and do's about self-care and aspects related to self-care. And tomorrow's session is exclusively on dimensions. When you look at dimensions, there are six spillover dimensions of uh, self-care that's been dealt by Professor Jasmine from our department. And uh, the next day's session is going to be on the self-esteem, building self-esteem and different coping strategies related to uh, all those are added uh, variables to self-care. That will be dealt by uh, Dr. Rachel. And the fourth day session is going to be on resilience and hope. All those are positive psychological variable, how they contribute to the well-being and the taking care of self. That will be dealt by me again. And the fifth day session is going to be on um, uh, related to optimism and uh, mindfulness. So um, all those are again a key variable that will be again dealt by uh, Dr. Rachel. And the last session is going to be on happiness which will be dealt by one of our professor. So these are all the key variables which related to self-care. Now, um, uh, without much delay, I'm going to my topic, self-care. So uh, when you think about self-care, you know, the word seems to be very, very light and uh, because it has been used in our daily life. Um, and uh, when, I, when, when I do this workshop on um, similar places and different places, you know, one thing people people keep asking me self care is very routine we do every everybody do it what is the big deal about a session on self care no um, and uh, probably when you undergo the session you will realize you know how much of we are not aware about ourselves um, self care is something and you look into the definition of it uh, the collins definition talks about in 2012 you know self care is a practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health in fact, you know, in Colin, he highlights one of the very interesting statements. He says about, you know, conscious decision made by an individual to take care of ourselves. This is where self-care differs from other things, you know. Everybody take care of themselves, you know. When we feel hungry, we go eat. When we feel sleep, you know, we sleep. When we want to take time, we do it. How conscious are we? How mindful are we doing it? You know, that's where the concept of self-care comes in. So self-care is a procedural time taken by yourself to take care of yourself. So which is a lot of consciousness and mindfulness is involved in how you take care of yourself. And again, the Stromberg definition, that's very interesting. You know, it talks about self-care. It refers to the activities and practices that we can engage in on a regular basis to reduce stress and to maintain and enhance well-being. So this is about uh, the definition. So when you look into that, what does uh, uh, you know, self-care can do to people? You know, it's one of the essential survival skill and it is fundamental for everyone. And the people should not think that, you know, self-care is only for people who are feeling sick, only for people who have disease or people who have ill health. No, self-care is for everybody else. So it is part of a self-regulation. So how does it regulate? It helps in balance between both physical and mental process through which we create a, a strong mental balance between our inner and the outer balance. So when we talk about uh, self-care, the concept of self-care, you know, it differs from people to people. It is not the same self-care. What is self-care to me need not be the same to you. So we have 40, uh, around 40 plus participants here. So when you uh, look at that, you know, what is the same self-care strategy? What I say will not be the same for you. So each one of us, we will have our own strategy. That's what it, talk, it talks about, you know. The self-care uh, time, you know, taken by individuals is different. But on the fundamental note, when you look at, you know, it is the practice of self-care means, you know, taking care of yourself. How much you take care of your what time spent to take care of your physical health, mental and emotional. So it is about the process of, it's just an intention how you do it. And again, self-care strategies differ from person to person. I would like to give you an example. So let's talk about the reflective time or me time. Say, for instance, uh, there are a few uh, category of people, you know, when they wanted to reflect on a good memory or they have some bad memories or something that has affected them, a crisis. Let's say uh, they have a crisis. Some have their uh, me time, you know, sitting, 
writing like a journal or spending their own time individually reflecting on what went on wrong what should have done what they could have done is much better or what is the rationally behind doing it they want to have their own personal time to reflecting about the situation for someone you know when they have an issues or crisis you know they wanted to call up one or two three people whom they loved ones or somebody whom they, they think that you know they good in sharing or they have a con- good trust they call up themselves so in one particular group you see that there is so much of inward reflection there there is so much of uh, uh, you know reflection time that they take for self in other sector you see that they wanted to express out their emotion they express out so here one someone want to reflect on their emotion someone want to express their emotion so this differs from people to people both are doing their self care strategy because they don't want it to keep it themselves somebody wants to reflect on what went on wrong so that in future they can avoid certain things somebody want to share it to others so that the burden comes down so the self care you know the time taken by the self the individual things you know differs from person to person and when you ask us you know why self care especially uh, and i believe when you're looking into the registration most of us uh, uh, 90% of the people who have registered for this workshop are from social work background or a uh, serving profession so when we are in the caring profession okay so we are overloaded with emotions and negative situation let's say for instance you know um, a person who is working in a hospital as a medical social worker most of the time when you look at you know the situation that you are working with it's it's always situations related to sadness or burnout of my stigma a lot of disease sickness more much of our emotions that what we are de- dealing is not very pleasant it's not very happy about it but you know that's what our calling is you know social workers you know we work in relation to with the problems deal with them bring them a solution you know elevate them try to elevate that's how so when you work with these situations throughout it is not our one day job it is not like you know a task is given you finish the task and you move forward it's like your routine every day you have to meet with the same situations so we are overloaded with emotions much of the time sometimes it can be the negative situation sometimes you know you feel overburdened and when you look into that people in caring profession often neglect our own well being because we constantly deal with all those uh, problems and i keep telling this to people you know um, especially the counselors are like a doormat when people come into it they pour out all this emotion and they are free especially when you're working in a settings like counseling you know and if it's a group counseling one person come share the problem and leave other person comes so the person when they uh, pour out all these problems you know we call it as catharsis when they leave out all this emotion they are free and they are relaxed but as a counselor as a social worker you feel overburdened when you don't know how to channelize your emotions when you don't know how to take care of yourself one way or one point we can be more emotionally burned out so there's something called you know the compassion itself you know overdrained you know we feel a compassion fatigue comes to us in one point of time so it's very important for us to take care of ourselves there's something called you know there's a myth people say think that you know self care is only for people who have been sick okay so that's how we you know we tell ourselves you know i'm a social worker i'm a counselor so um, um, i think i should be able to handle the problem let's break the myth self care is for everyone has you know when you don't know that you know everyone has got mental health so self care is not only for people who struggle with mental illness so it's for everyone so it's very important for us to know and when you look at you know there's another thing that comes to my mind you know it is important that we take time to do for our self well being when we are not you know taking care of ourselves who else you expect to take care of ourselves that's very important in order to for us to give the best to others you know we need to give best to ourselves that is one of the important thing and this is this picture will give you a clear uh, you know understanding of it let's say opposite to self care you know which means people doesn't take care of themselves there is no self regulation what happens if there is a lack of self regulation when you don't know how to prioritize your work for yourself in one point of time obviously for the training that has been given in the field of social work we know how to do multitasking but if that is going to be the routine one day or the other we may prone to do the overwork overloaded with that and overloaded with the work also sometimes we can do happily when our mood goes down when their tough time comes in when there are huge crises comes in we are stuck then it will bring in an imbalance in physical and the psychological health one point of time if the balance is something which is miss you know it's not about what problem you face it's about you know how much balance that you have people who are sitting here you know nobody can say that i am free out of problem 
every one will have some of the other problems in our life so it's not about the problem that we have it's about you know how do we manage what is the balance that we have what are the coping mechanism that we have how resilient are we in able to move forward if we are stuck it is an issue but if we are able to move forward in life you know that talks about the balance so when we are prone to overwork so they may may have a imbalance in our physical and the psychological health slowly what happens you know especially when we are working in a field where there is so much of compassion love is expected so we may be drained out we may leave in a position where compassion fatigue comes in tomorrow professor jessivan will highlight on how compassion fatigue will will be very dangerous for a, a service profession you know when a compassion fatigue comes in it will lead to the burnout so usually we see that you know when you're working in a caring profession you see that you know uh, caregivers will have this burnout that one point of a time if we are not able to take care of ourselves we can have the burnout so probably that may reflect in having a low quality of work and then an unhealthy living all this will becomes as a circle probably you say that you know you try and somehow work and then you again set up and again this turmoil runs again and again one point to we find it very difficult when when we find it very difficult what is the contribution that we are going to make to the people and especially to the clients who are going to come in so the reflect love so, so as a social worker what has been expected from us is reflecting compassion reflecting professionalism reflecting the help you know that is what you know when when, when you look into the picture you see that you know it's a reflection so when when you are dull you know what is the kind of reflection that you are going to give it to your client okay your client comes with so much of your problem client most of a client comes with so much of overload it's expecting something from you when you are low what are what are you are selling what are you selling is it you are selling compassion love or you are selling again a depression sadness or your mood swing now that's one of the important aspect i think when you look into that this this caption means a lot you know you cannot pour it from an empty cup and you must fill your cup first so for instance you know a person with a body you know with the physical flesh you know sometimes we feel especially with the physical health with the overburden sometimes we feel low all right the body is nothing you know the body feels very empty without the spirit what is that spirit spirit is the positive energy that comes in all right the cycle though there has to be a balance between the physical and the psychological health physical and the mental health so when ourselves you know as a social workers when we are feeling empty when you feel low you know you cannot fill others with happiness when you can, you cannot fill others with content and send them with content you cannot uh, you know sell messages of positivity when you are low with that so this is something very very important and you say that you know most of the person who they walk into social workers they come to social workers having lot of expectation they are not here to listen to your stories they are not listen they they don't want to listen to your mood swings or what has happened they wanted something extra so imagine so social workers are something you know we need to be feel ourselves very strong with a positive vibes self care is so much important so when you look at you know the aspects of self care and again you know uh, there are uh, six different aspects of self care are there and um, i'm not going to deal much into that because we are going to have a separate session on it and uh, when you look at you know the physical psychological workplace emotional spiritual and relationship these are the five aspects related to it and uh, probably when you look at you know physical say this is one thing that I will i will explain why physical health is so important this is one of the uh, who um, uh, data in 2018 that was released it's about the statistics of global health uh, estimates probably let's keep this pandemic outside because this is a time of uncertainty and uh, this is data from 2016 you know look at it top you know uh, uh, these um, reasons for death is always related to lifestyle diseases something you know heart diseases stroke you know uh, pulmonary diseases you know there are, there are certain things that can be avoided due to self self care if you are properly able to take care of a good diet good sleep proper nutrition and you know um, good lifestyle certain things can be avoided you see never imagine that you know diabetes could be one of the leading cause or heart disease can be leading cause 50 years before all right there was a lot of communicable diseases were there now you know there was a non communicable disease probably if you talk about you know people are saying that this is an error of a non communicable disease but this pandemic has again uh, you know uh, toxic covid the results you know now it is an error of communicable disease as well 
so when you look into that these are the areas that we need to be uh, focused on so i'm not going to more detail into the uh, different aspects related to it and again when you look at the different dimensions of wellness you know different dimensions of healthcare no it is pretty much similar to the uh, self care dimensions you have physical uh, self care social how are you able to maintain the um, relationship with others intellectually you know how are you going to contribute how are you contented how is your self esteem spiritually again when we talk about spiritual health it's not about religion it is about the faith that you have in living it's about the destination that you strongly believe because everybody has got a problem in the world how will we surviving because we have a hope that something or the other will come in a way we can manage it so the faith that you have in life the faith that you have in living the faith that you have in destination that factor talks about the spiritual health and when we talk about the emotional health again the balance over it and um, i keep telling this to people you know whenever there is a problem that happens to individual there is possibly only three things that can happen for invariably any problem that you undergo number 1 either over a period of time when you do certain thing or something eventually happens the problem changes over a period of time say for instance uh, when you have um, when you have uh, your uh, relationship issues okay sometimes you try talking settling about good communication you set up right saying a message so that you restore the relationship the problem is rectified and the person feels happy number 2 sometimes when you experience a problem all right if forever the problem doesn't change only the person keeps changing say for instance death of a loved one that's a problem because there's a sudden death of a loved one that's a huge crisis for you the crisis is not going to change ever all right the person who is dead is not going to come back all right nobody has got the power to come back you know it's a destination that has to go all right so when you in this situation the person learns to adopt to live without that person without that person he is able to manage he is able to resilient he is able to move forward this is number 2 when the problem arises number 3 the problem doesn't changes and the person doesn't changes constantly there is a conflict the problem keeps continuing say for instance in the either in the case one is a relationship issue the person is not ready to either to work on the relationship not either to give up on the relationship constant conflict happens even in the same cases like death if the person is dead you know the person doesn't accept the death he is not ready to well, move forward in life there is always a conflict what happens in case three either the conflict goes to a extreme either the person has to quit life either chooses to you know suicide or sometimes you know he lives life without peace constantly with a problem constantly with a depression constantly with an ill health there is only possibly three things happens now one thing uh, we should understand it is not about the problem it's about your perception about the problem everybody has got a problem that's what in say even in this pandemic you see that you know there are people very highly resilient they know about, okay whatsoever comes we are ready to face it there are certain people who are still in the safe zone they keep thinking about it panicking about it so it's not about the problem it's about your perspective to the problem so self care talks more about you know how you can bring in a perspective change in about looking about things occupational health very important because as a working professionals when you look into that majority of the time that we spent uh, uh, apart from the family is the occupation so how is that you know occupational self care can be taken so when we look into that you know i was talking more about the good mood perspective and everything you know um like you can take a time to reflect on what is that good mood when you talk about you know i feel very good i feel very bad what is that it is it is it is nothing but the you know the feeling that we experience are nothing more than the chemical reactions that taking place inside our body say for instance if you say that i feel very happy which means that and happiness uh, you know hormones has been secreted i feel very low because there is a mood that brings in low all right so each and every emotions we experience is a result or release of certain hormones in the body again when we talk about emotions emotions are not very close to heart or very to uh, mind alone no like it's very very mediocre that we see in the pictures and the movies you know we talk about emotion they 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 assimilate with the heart or sometimes they say with the brain no emotions are embodied in throughout our body so our body is responsible for the hormones so some hormones are responsible for making us feel good 
and some hormones are responsible for making us feel bad you know there are four different hormones which i am going to talk about it so um, as a social worker very little knowledge in science have been doing this workshop and i found this four um, uh, hormones which are very important and we can do activities to you know make this hormone secreted more we can consciously allow that the things to happen so uh, many of you know about this four hormones which is dopamine oxytocin endorphin and serotonin and these hormones you know when you talk about you know endorphin you know when we exercise there is so much this endorphin you know uh, hormone is more um, closely attached to the physical um, uh, self care so physical health so when we talk about you know when is this hormones is released when any individual indulge in uh, more than 30 minutes or a minimum of 30 minutes in the physical activity naturally our body secretes its endorphin the endorphins is responsible for making us very alert you know physical energy that uh, you know gives us a lot of happiness in us and it gives us good mood in that okay that's why when you see that you know especially when people are doing uh, gymming for the first time or uh, people who start doing exercises initially when we do exercise you know we find it very difficult let's say you know a few of you who live you know uh, who have this habit of going to visiting a gym or doing an exercise or going for a walking initial days when you do it for the first day or a second you know you feel pain you feel pain over the body let's say you started working for half an hour all right so first day you feel heavy loaded with your body you feel knee pain you know the entire body pains so if you start continue doing it for second time again severe pain third day severe pain and from fourth day and fifth day dramatically the pain gets reduces and if you're constantly doing the walking or the practices over the period of time you know the pain slowly settle downs and you feel energetic that's why you see that people who are in in daily doing the exercise they'll see that you know um uh, today i went for a walking i feel very energetic and it, it sometimes feels, you know, uh, very laughing for the people who have not done it, who have not experienced it. Is it walking gives you refreshment or going for gym for a one hour workout gives you refreshment? You know, this is nothing but, you know, when you start doing the exercises in the initial days, you know, the hormone that is released is endorphin. Actually, the endorphin is like a coping mechanism. It, it is released to cope up with the pain. But if it is done over a period of time, that gives a relaxation to the body. So that's why in the first point it says that you no, know, this hormone helps the body to cope with the pain of exercises. Any pain that you know that you know because the endorphin is released to cope up. When it is done as a routine, you know that coping mechanism helps you to energize you. So this is one of the way that you know again laughing, you know um, um, uh, generating you know good laughing mechanism, you know brings a lot of uh, helps us to generate the endorphin. Next, when you talk about dopamine. Dopamine, you know, it, it is called as a you know, pleasure hormone, you know. Dopamine helps you to give, you know, mental alertness. What is mental alertness? That's why, you know, when you drink any energy drinks, tea or coffee, you feel that mentally alert, you know. Dopamine is released by eating foods that are rich in protein. So, which is, again, it talks about more about the physical nutritious health, you know. Very, very important how you take care of a balanced diet. In our journey of life, you know, sometimes we accomplish little things or big things. When somebody appreciates us, okay, you did a good job. No, you look, uh, you know, um, what you the work did is commendable. You know, when people appreciate us, you know, the dopamine secretes inside. That's why we feel happy. You know, now you understand, we do the same thing again and again. That's called reinforcement. We do the same thing again and again to get rewards, to get, you know, prizes. Because, you know, we feel happy about it. Somebody appreciates it. Okay, you did your presentation really good. Oh, you attended the class regularly. That's good. You know, when somebody appreciates it, it is so internal. You want to do these things again and again. Why you wanted to do it again and again? When somebody appreciates it, that dopamine keeps secreted. So you feel happy about it. You feel very good about it. So this is something, you know, dopamine gets secreted. So again, you can be responsible for other or other person to uh, for their dopamine to be secreted. So start appreciating people in life. In social, we talks about, you know, positive vibes has to come. Even for small things, appreciate them. It's not necessarily, it has to be their responsibility to, it's okay to go and step in and appreciate people. So, the same thing, when people get appreciated or feel good, you know, we feel that. And in each instant, and that's why you say that, you know, when you go and do shopping, when you buy new things, you know, you feel very happy about it. Even in all this sadness, you know, in all the things that are attached to the 
cultural things you see that you know buying new things you know buying gifting people you know that all brings in uh, you know secretion of this dopamine and serotonin serotonin has got a special it is called as you know happiness hormone serotonin sometimes called as a happiness hormone right it helps us to prevent that mood swing and uh, especially serotonin is very easy you know the hormone gets secreted when you when you expose yourself to sunlight and uh, eat, uh, eat foods related which is very uh, rich in carbohydrates and also by exercising and again uh, sometimes you know when you when you um, this happiness hormone we uh, indulge in some activities related to uh, happiness say for instance have your um, funny times or something you know watching a joke or you no know, sharing with people chatting with people you know sometimes happiness you know uh, is very important to our life so that that we ease everybody is stuck with so much of issues especially during the pandemic situation so much of uncertainty that is happening there's a lot of report that comes in unprediction comes in and the things changes over it so we should know how to keep ourselves happy say for instance serotonin is released when we do it in a way that can benefit others say for instance you know um uh, one of the um, article that i read about you know what are the ways to uh, um, generate or uh, what are the ways that you know serotonin can be secreted uh, one of the author writes this way somebody writes a blog to uh, uh, you know express their uh, mind or express what they wanted to do it and when they finish it you know they feel that you know very happy because the serotonin gets secreted and sometimes you know question and answer session you know they have a blog to write it when people appreciate about it serotonin gets secreted so your contribution to the society now i know few of us you know will be contributing in terms of tele counseling to others in terms of helping to others you know that time we feel good because you know we take a position of upper hand we are supporting someone we we feel that we are worth in supporting to others you know in those cases you know serotonin gets secreted secreted helping others i think for social workers you know by naturally i think it should be secreting because we in a profession we've been helping others next when you talk about you know oxytocin oxytocin is released you know when we become closer to other human the the simple you know with the touch that we uh, give with a small hug that we give you know it is something called you know when we hug a family or the friend members the oxyto oxytocin is released the humanly touch which means you know somebody is with us somebody is oh, okay patting you when you're crying you know patting you that is where that you know oxytocin gets released the physical touch can be related to interpersonal relationships for the married couple it can be the sexual relationships all right so the, all those things you know the helps an individual to get oxytocin secreted and that's why you see that in an indian culture you know when there is a death you know people come hug and cry you know this is something that is so so in the vedic literature you know people know about it the touch can definitely bring in a huge difference in the individual's health and that's why you see that when a child cries you know the child doesn't know who is who is carrying them just you know pat them you know uh, just you know shake the baby you know touch the baby you know the baby feels that you know there is some connection is there and stops crying so the touch will have always have a greater impact in the lives you know oxytocin and again when we talk about it this is very applicable for the interpersonal relationships all right so somebody to, uh, giving them but in a professional relationships we know that you know it can be two or three taps that can be given to a counselor apart from that there's a professional relationship that has to be maintained keeping in that into account and when we look into that what are the benefits of self care is there any benefits that the self care can do to people definitely there is a lot of benefits that we can do healthier lifestyle as i said you know a lot of these components related to self care you know talks about you know physical aspect of it how are you going to maintain it good nutritious food taking about it balanced diet that you are doing about it taking care of physical time all those are the benefits better physical health again improved recovery from uh, illness say for instance somebody is recovering all right so when we people uh, talk about the rehabilitation let's understand rehabilitation it's not only the physical aspect of it it's more about the psychological and the emotional aspect of it the positive vibes that will always have an impact on the physical health that's what we talk about you know there there is always a connection between psycho and soma and the body and the mind so there is so much of positive vibes that has to come in so but that helps in the physical recovery increase the resilience resilience so now we talk about what is resilience resilience is an ability for the individual to bounce back to the normal level everybody has got a problem so how are some people is able to move forward because they are not stuck with the problem they have crises yes they cry about it they weep about it they are depressed probably they will take time 
in one or two days time or it depends upon the issue they week weeks time and they come back to the normal level that is what you know when you going to take care of yourself you know you're naturally bringing in increasing your resilience next is capacity to manage stress so this is very important aspect of it everybody has got a stress and how are we going to manage it we are, and once we need to understand whether you like it or not life has to move on you have to proceed and there is always a destination that is kept for and we have to move towards the destination whether you like it or not it will move there's only two way whether you you are setting everything and you're moving it happily by you approving yourself or you're struck you've been forced by certain things that you're moving there's again perspective stage that comes in which are which is what are you choosing it again greater productivity as the initial stage you know principle was addressing about it you know, um if the equipment is not strong you know the slowly the productivity comes down in social work what is the tool you know in social work what is a tool you know as a case manager what is a tool you yourself as a tool you yourself as a powerful tool in bringing in a change in the people so if you're not going to take care of yourself now definitely nothing is going to happen this is what benefit of self care you know when you're going to take time for yourself when you're going to reflect on both is when you're going to have a strong mental health you're going to impart the productivity you're able to meet so many clients you're going to give a lot of positive energy there's so many people who are going to wanting to come to you there's a lot of productivity that can happen i can tell the relationships especially when you're working in a sector let's say for instance it's a multidisciplinary say example all the people are working in a caring profession so everybody is bound to have same similar feelings which is which is which is very dull feelings related to sickness hey you know issues related to psychiatric illness and everything when you're not able to you know transact your positive vibes again there is a relationship which is possibility can come when you're able to take care of yourself you can be able to have a very very healthy relationships which is very important and when you talk about you know increase social cohesion what is social cohesion is a gelling force that you can come in just in a, so in social group or we call it as you know community resilience or in call it as you know social cohesion is which is mean the gelling force so which means you are able to understand others you are able to care for others only when you have a sound mind you have time for others to think so the benefit of self care is something it will bring in the increase in, in the uh, self cohesion and also improves the quality of life and uh, improves the quality of life it reduces the symptoms related to mental health so what are the symptoms related to mental health living with depression with constant you know you're not you don't have a sound mind you don't take care of yourself you don't eat well you don't sleep well you don't communicate with problem you isolate yourself all those problems can because you know talking about isolation you have the component of interpersonal relationship comes in in the self care strategy again when you don't take eat you know physical health comes in as a strategy when you don't take care of your sleep and then everything you know again physical health comes in there are every other components of being um, taken care by self care again when you look about you know self care you know self care improves our lives in different areas and in different ways which are very important to the overall health again one component talks about physical one talks about occupational health one so everything is important again let's understand these are all embodied in each other nothing can be seen in isolation you cannot say okay physical health is something different you channelize it separately because everything is important when you when you are taking good diet if you don't have a proper sleep again there's going to be a pattern of cycle that is going to come in which disturbs everything so everything has to go hand in hand and one of the important aspects that i would talk about you know practicing self care can have a remarkable effect on your self esteem very very important again you know how do you estimate yourself that's a positive vibe that you have whether how much you um, you know think that you are able to move forward how much you trust yourself you know that is one thing that you know practice in self care can improve your strategy say for instance you have a problem you have an effective self care strategy and you're solving it you're moving forward you yourself get confident and next time you know there's an assurance that comes in anything that comes you're able to you know face and move forward when we take care of ourselves we develop the self worth because you know why how when do you take care of yourself because you feel yourself is worth i'm important i should take care of my health i should sleep well because my health is so important because i am adding value to someone else like i am there is someone someone is dependent on me when you start valuing yourself you know that's how the self care comes in it is again in in reversible when you take care of yourself you know you're also valuing your self worth 
by taking care of ourselves and never needs you know we are telling ourselves that i deserve this yes i deserve this sleep now i deserve peace you know i deserve a good happy life i um, deserve to be in peace you know all those things happens when you practice self care and with the regular self care no our self awareness is greatly enhanced this is something very important especially during this uh, setting a context on this pandemic uh, i'm sure 70% of of us you know whether you like it or not whether you realize or not you are spending much time on taking care of yourself but whether you are realizing it whether you are mindful about it is a bigger question because the time that you send spend with you are unfortunately uh, in this time of pandemic in this time of lockdown we are forced to do that all right are we enjoying it that's a bigger question say for instance you get up you do your routine you eat and you know you spend time with it are you valuing it are you uh, you know reflecting on whom did we speak what did we speak you know what did we eat and how much time we sleep you know how much time we contribute to others you know are we mindful about it that is something that you know, we need to self uh, um, uh, you know uh, that brings in self awareness our go to activity which usually be something that we are already enjoying but are we you know aware about it there's something that you are newly for instance you know uh, many of us you know i have been talking to people you know they are realizing new opportunities say for instance you know they would have tried it once or twice you know uh, one of my friends said that you know i have never been a passionate about music but it was so boring when i just listened to what i started singing you know i never knew that i had the skill which is something they were exploring about it so when you explore more about yourself you are being self aware about it new things can come in and i'm sure one or two people would have realized it one of my you know one of my friend you know started writing about their blogs which which probably the time doesn't allow them to experience it but now this is an ideal time that is given for us to explore more on the self which are the things that we like to do it which are the things is naturally is given and what why do you want it which are the things that we don't like it it's something you know we can we can keep it aside and move forward in life so these are the things that help self care helps us to you know more aware about the self when our self esteem and the self awareness improves it has a very positive effect on the overall mindset very important when you know about our self esteem and the self awareness so much of positivity that comes in so much of trust about ourselves that comes in that in turn enables us to care for our friends families and you know especially our client and the significant others in our families very important and now you know we straight away we're going to look into um, the key challenges related to self care and before moving into the key challenges um, uh, related to self care there are key variables uh, probably um uh, related to self care i will give you a glimpse about it and um, there are key variables there are something called we call it as a positive psychological variable uh, there are four positive psychological variable that is very very important for the well being of individuals number one we talk about the resilience with the resilience is something that is very important for people to be resilient over it to take on the problem next is hope third is optimism fourth is you know happiness these are the four psychological variables very important for the individuals to move forward in any situation given the context of this pandemic how resilient are we how hopeful are we about the future how optimistic about uh, we are and how happy we are these are the four things that decides people about invariably they are saying that you know invariably any personality people can be if these four areas can be acquired or it can be practiced it can be learned it can be experienced over it then the psychological well being of the individual can be really strong that's what the spell over we are going to look into the next uh, few days and uh, while looking into coming back and looking into the challenges of self care there are definitely a lot of practical challenges that we have in self care day before yesterday hindu article writes about you know uh, people say that you know one of the cheapest thing uh, for a person to do is self care but and the, the cheapest thing is the toughest thing for an individual to do as well i didn't know so people but there are a lot of people the day before yesterday there was a hindu article talks about you know about self care or why it is uh, important but it is very tough for people why because we start negotiating on our uh, health and the uh, first thing when you talk about you know carer mindset especially when we are uh, in the profession of social work caring for others you know we always think it is more important to help others and i will be okay that's constantly we say that you know after all i am a counselor you know after all i am a social worker i know how to take care of it's important how i how much i contribute 
but this is one of the biggest challenge that we have because this is a mindset that we keep in uh, us next is something called you know superhero mindset i should be able to cope after all i am a counselor as i said you know sometimes as a social workers when we experience problem you know and i have seen this will be in a couples or as a social workers you know it's so tough they work out on the relationship issues and especially when the friends are social workers you know because they try thing that after being a social worker you know i don't know why the problem comes see we are not aliens in the society we are human beings first the identity that we carry is human being so all the emotions all the uh, you know attitude behaviors related to every human everybody will carry this it's not necessarily the counselors and the social workers will have a different uh, uh, you know uh, the um, uh, human inside them this just acquired knowledge that we have probably you know this is one of the stopping forces stumble block for our bus to proceed in taking care of ourselves we say that i should be able to cope after all i'm a counselor you know that's one thing that we don't seek uh, help from mothers because you know you you have this hesitant you know after all i am a social worker how can i go and ask them because i am in a position that i am helping others this is one of the biggest challenges people face uh, let me tell you one thing every human being needs emotions every human being needs a platform to express emotion it's okay to ask for help no matter who we are all right the next is something about the time i am too busy i need to work for my first you know my work is first something you know see especially when we are working in a profession and taking care you know this is something you cannot postpone say for instance when accounts uh, when a client comes urgent for a client for, or something client comes with an emergency it's not like okay i will do this target tomorrow you can't do that because that's with an emotion that's how every situation for us is like that when you are working in a community if there is a crisis you cannot say that you know it's time for me two days i will take break i'll come and work no no that can't be done that's how it is so how are we go taking ourselves in much of all this busy schedule are we having time for ourselves that's very important you know competing priorities there are so much of priorities are there how are we going to schedule the timings Mm, that's very very important in a social profession. We take things for granted, and I'm sure none of us with the uh, here is saying that you know I work only from eight to uh, five. We get calls beyond five. That's how that's how our you know uh, the culture is our problem. The work culture has set up trend like that. But in midst of all those things, are we able to take time for ourselves? Are we able to break these challenges and move forward in taking time for ourselves? That's something very important. and second when you talk about you know perceived value say for instance i don't believe i deserve it or i am worth of it self care has no time or waste of i am sure you know whatever i have been so spoken nothing is new not even one single sentence what i have spoken is new to you everything is so common this is something very 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 difficult for self care including myself when i have uh, known about this concept a year before probably one and a half years before i never thought this will have so much of impact in fact i will tell you i have not fully practiced it but i'm learning it i'm in the stage of practicing until i had one of my very close friend uh, at a very young age as a very very practical social worker um had a very mysterious you know work life balancing issues related to work life balance always was working for uh, 13 hours 14 hours sleepless night very young person of 32 years as i know um, i had a very massive heart attack and died now that's how i was able to reflect on what is self care when we are giving so much to the society who is going to take care of ourselves when you are not able to you know advocate for yourself who are you advocating that's something very 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 important and um, and uh, when i was one of my very senior professor about the self care and my professor said you know probably you know you, this is concept is very related to western context we indian we don't talk about self care very true but you know we have been doing it only thing is we have not consciously spoken about it that's something all the self care strategies um, uh, uh, what you will be dealing with tomorrow in uh, in coming days you know everything that is so in our part of our culture only thing is we have not realized it something called meditation which is so in our culture we have not realized about it we have politicized everything probably that's how the, the goodness of uh, something has not reached people it's time for us to reflect on what it is and take benefit out of it and when you talk is no not part of routine i'm really motivated so when you people say that you know self care yeah very important i need to take that i need to do it but you know you're motivated but it's hard to change their habits start doing it it's nothing you know i have never done it before see for instance you know 
we think that you know see i work from morning to evening i don't have time for myself if you're not able to carry on one or two things you know how are you going to move forward very important how are you going to spend time for yourself you have to set your routine something or the other at the end you know i'm going to share one bingo chat you know that's give you different um, aspects related to uh, self care strategies if you can pick up one or two or even for a few things possible that you can do it next workplace culture so no um, no no i know uh, self care practicing is okay but you know it is not part of a routine lack of support engagement i'm definitely sure uh, especially we are in the uh, caring profession you know you cannot say this is not my target this is my self care time i will not do it you know something because we deal with emotions we don't deal with missions so uh, rationalizing certain things is very difficult because we can emotionally we can do it you know rationalizing certain things is something which is very very difficult but it's important especially during this pandemic time and we know that you know we are going to have a huge you huge uh, you know challenge in um, uh, you know working with people especially in uh, if you are in the area of medical and psychiatry dealing with counseling or working directly with people for any matter working with employees it's going to be a paradigm shift for people and people are going to definitely look into look for forward for support and if your cup is not full if you're not filled with spirit or positive energy the flesh is nothing as a physical health or the individual as a person we cannot do anything so the positive vibes is so important unless we are full we cannot do anything next and this is something a myth self care isn't selfish you know sometimes in our part of our culture or part of our knowledge you see that it is always good to help others it is serve others you know that's how it is and but all our uh, you know um, value system talks about it but it's so important that you know we take care of ourselves it is not being selfish it's definitely not being selfish it's about consciously and it is very intelligent move that you take self care is necessary for our effectiveness and successful in honoring our profession and personal commitments very important anybody who wants to succeed in your life succeed in your profession first you need to succeed in yourself you need to be sound you need to be having a balanced mind that's what in maslow's hierarchy it says that you know the basic needs has to be met in order to go move forward and again i will say that you know basic of your self need has to be met when you are having so much of problem so much of issues i'm not saying that person with problem cannot do counseling but i'm saying that if you're not able to manage it if you're not able to balance it it's definitely difficult that's how you will have when you're not able to balance it when the client talks about the problem you start crying with him you start loving that we call it as you know instead of being very empathetic we feel very sympathetic about ourselves we are starting putting ourselves into their shoes and you know and you know, you start one point of the empathy moves into a state of you know uh, sympathy instead of you know feeling for the client you know most of the time we do we will be feeling with the client we'll be feeling with them we'll be crying with them no we have to feel for them so there's a lot of differences when you feel for them you take a position of you know you have your own boundaries you set outside and then you feel for them you feel with them is something you move into your their bound your their boundaries your movie opening your boundaries all together you know you you are into an emotional uh, trauma that is not allowed for a social worker we have got some social ethics in that working with people and again this is uh, uh, the chart that i will be sharing with you all so this talks about the uh, life self care wheel so each components i am I'm, i'm sure for you it will be very difficult to look into the screen and this is going to be shared on the um, I, um, in your whatsapp and in your email so you can look into it and in physical you talk about you know our safe housing so uh, have you been a safe place to stay and regular medical care heating healthy exercises and being sexually alert getting enough sleep taking a vacation take time off uh, you know must all those things are listed and i am not saying that everything you should follow everything what are the things that is possible and i am again i'm reinforcing the thought what is self care to me not be the self care to you what is a me time let's say that you know in physical it talks about get a me time what is your me time for me you know when i have a problem i don't reflect on it i actually express it so i have my own couple of friends or my family members i express it out i went out i feel relaxed that's how i do it so if someone have a habit of writing a journal so take what is your mean time very very important of it we have been constantly doing everything 
a simple thing that you can before going to sleep you know if you can take a 5 minutes time of reflect on what has happened today what all you did it's like you know um, a flashback time you know uh, how in movies they will just go to the flashback and come back you know can we have a flashback time every night on through whatever happens uh, to our, towards a day something that you can do it and professional there is a list of thing that is a and in professional there is one thing that is a learning to say no to people as a social worker we 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 don't want to put a sorrow face we don't want to say no we always want to say yes 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 i'll do it i want to do it we always wanted to be in good books you know so something that you know on compromising okay it's okay to be in the good book of others and what are you compromising on is this compromising on your own health compromising on your own values to take care of yourself this is something we need to reflect on and then again psychological self reflection writing a journal and this is something and one activity that you will do it i think and but it will have a lot of meaning uh, years before people have this habit of writing a diary you know now i don't know how many of you do it probably our uh, social media will tell us you know the facebook will have all the update the insta will insta stories will talk about it. but anything it can be any digital media or anything but are we taking time to do that which is very good and uh, in fact we will say that you know if if something that you wanted to post a photo and write something about it that's well and good because you are taking time for yourself and um, probably in the in, in indian culture they say that you know these people are trying to do exhibit themselves it's okay but you know, as long as you are happy about you know expressing it to people and you wanted to stay connected with people that's fine whatever is happy for you and keeping yourself content i think go ahead this will be shared to uh, people this is something that i was sharing about uh, self care bingo and i'm sure you will be receiving that in your uh, uh, chat box and uh, this something that you know you deserve the best thing there is something the list of uh, 30 things are given 30 plus things are given if you can take and work on any 10 things that absolutely you can have it as a um, routine uh, or schedule say for instance meditation it can be any personal meditation for 10 minutes but you should do it every day you can choose meditation as one taking a warm bath could be relaxing mindfulnessly keeping a journal or writing dancing for 10 minutes or stretching out or you know doing yoga it can be some, uh, uh, it can be a by practice or something it can be uh, along with the medication okay helping someone as a plan of routine so uh, in this cases alone you don't keep your regular work work as a help someone have have something it's separate eating a chocolate can be eating your favorite dish that you are taking a nap but never underestimate a small nap we have a very refreshing energy that you can go in for a walk have your loved ones you know have your uh, people so that take time go with them even going for a walk if you want to hear a song or, or anything that's in having you know um, crafting doing your own craft you know uh, uh, taking time for some people celebrating you know all the, in this if you can um, if we are too busy if you can have at least five plus uh, at least five things you can take it and make it as a serious habit and do it over a period of time you will definitely see a change because i'm saying you know one thing the biggest challenge with self care everybody thinks everything is normal everything is okay i know about meditation i know about writing a journal i know let's not negotiate on it even the small changes that you take consciously to take care of yourself will definitely have an impact and i would appreciate every one of you for taking your time in much of all this busy schedule to be part of the self care and this is something which is which is very important in coming days you know we are going to deal with some psychological variables which is very important um in and not only in exercising with your client but exercising in your life as well yeah this is my last slide uh, thank you and i am ready for the questions uh, to move forward and uh, as you talk about it you know self care it's something that you take time it's like you are hugging yourself you know taking a moment you will be okay and uh, and don't forget this is very very important and i'm ready for the questions meanwhile you can also start working on your self care bingo at the end of the sessions um we will be having um, a tool that has been given to you that is a professional self care tool and um, and uh, we are doing it for an academic purpose there's a two way learnings are there one you can also be self aware about how where you live uh, where you are and uh, we will do the rating also we will give you the uh, how the rating could be done for those skills and data that we will collecting is for an academic purpose and um, thank you for your support and i uh, we we'll, we can move on to the question and answer session thank you so much ma'am 
that was an amazing session. Uh, now uh, we'll move on to the question and answers. Uh, so we have a question from Ms. Udaya Ganeshan. She asked you to give some suggestions on how to overcome the superhero attitude. Okay. So for instance, when you talk about the superhero attitude, you know, this comes in this one of the huge challenges which uh, uh, related to social work. There are two things that are there. Number one, the superhero attitude comes to ourselves because now the society has, it. we ourselves think that, you know, what happens if I go and tell others? It's sometimes it because, you know, it is not only a social worker, it's something that happens to a strong personality in a family as well. All right. Say, for instance, when, when you see somebody with so strong and an entire family looks at you very emotionally strong, when this person falls down, you know, there is some kind of a block is there, you know, but this person is not able to go and express it out because there's a lot of expectation that comes from the family. And sometimes this person looks into it because everybody thinks that, you know, commonly they say that if you yourself is down, you know, what others will do it. That's what they usually tell it, you know, when they're very, a uh, person who is very emotional, so, uh, what happened? If you are dull, you know, what is the family is going to do? This person itself started crying. I don't know what is going to happen to the family. You know, that's something that has been expected from the society. That's one way. Number two, we ourselves will think that, you know, I should be able to be cope up. Let's all understand that, you know, we are not a rational human beings. We are emotionally embodied. Each one of us. We are first identity that we have in the societies as a human. And the human was bound to have equal emotions to everybody else. Equal emotions, attitude, behaviors. It is only because when you come to learn this as a profession, you try to adopt to that. It's not necessary that you will not leave the uh, innate human behaviors, which is prone to have good emotions, bad emotions. It's okay to fry. And one thing we should, uh, superhero uh, um, attitude, one thing we should understand, we are all human. We are bound to have problems. And when we have problems, we will break down. It's okay to ask help. And nobody is going to talk about it. We need to uh, come out of a shell when asking help. And asking help is not a position of powerless. That is the one message that I want to give you. Because when people ask for help, you know, it's always, it's, uh, it's sometimes understood as the person who is um, unable to do it, who is in a powerless position and somebody who is helping in a powerful position. Let's break this stigma. Let's break this mindset. The person who is asking help is a bold decision that he is making. It's a conscious decision. It's an attitudinal decision that he's making because he doesn't want the situation to be like that. He wants a you know, good decision to bring in a change in that. Let's let's have a different perspective to helping people or get help. So when a person who is as a social worker, when you have a problem, please ask for help. Asking help is not something talks about your weakness. Asking help talks about your very strong decision that you're making to bring in a change in yourself. In midst of all this crisis, you're making a strong decision to bring the change which is something talks about your strong personality. So asking for help talks about your strong personality. Let's break that chain of, you know, asking help is something related to low power, then inability. Let's break the chain and let it start from us. So that is something that, you know, that message has to go. Thank you, ma'am. The next question from our participant Karna Barnam is that, uh, can you explain a little bit more on dopamine and give some examples for better understanding? Yeah. So, so dopamine is something that, you know, it gives the mental alertness and especially, you know, uh, for instance, um, in life, when you will have little tasks, everybody, uh, um, um, even if a person who is disinterested in life also will have something that they wanted to achieve. When you are setting some target, when you're achieving that target, you know, when you feel that, you know, psychologically, you're filling that target, you, you, you're achieving that goal, you know, and that's where you know, when you go to the sense of that achievement, you feel that, you know, very happy about it because the dopamine gets secreted. And and dopamine can be secreted by when uh, in the foods, when we eat foods related to rich in protein. Okay. And one of the things, you know, it, it, it is something related to... Uh, um, um, say for instance, achieving a target, say for instance, you're writing an exam, all right, writing an exam, you're fixing for a target. If you achieve that target, that is one area. So sense of achievement is like sense of accomplishment, 
sense of finishing, their sense of reaching the goal. So these are the things you know when you try reaching it. This is also called as you know uh, the the pleasure hormone that you'll say you reach that and you feel very pleasure about it. And um, in 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 psychology, it's called as you know reinforcement because you like the thing. You know you wanted to do the same thing again and again because you like that expected result. Say for instance, you start doing um, uh, gym, you know. So within a two weeks time, you feel that you know some some changes in your physique or you feel energetic because the, you like that outcome. It's not you like the process. It's not that every day you want to go to gym because you like the outcome. You wanted to do that to continue with the process again and again because you like the expected result. The same thing happens, you know. Say for instance, you you study well and you you get your exam, your outcome really well, and you like the outcome, and you're ready to do with the process again and again. So in that way, when you start getting that sense of accomplishment, that's where the dopamine level and the dopamine gets released. So that's where. So you need to set targets and um, and especially to bring in uh, the simple things, you know, to bring in mental alertness, some kind of a health thing that you see people they've been working exhausted for a long time. They take a shot of coffee. You feel your coffee. You feel that very energetic. You feel, uh, you know, some tea or something. You feel very energetic because that brings in mental alertness. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, for other things related to dopamine, I think you should go and Google it. All right, this is something that little information that I have. Yeah, thank you. Sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Ms. Saranya Armugam. She asks you to explain more about overcoming lack of role models or support, especially at times like this when we have less time to share or see support. How to overcome when we don't have role, role models, models or support? Is that yes, question? Yes, ma'am. Or say, for instance, especially see uh, when we talk about this pandemic. For role model, when you talk about role model, let's say for instance you're talking about a counselor or you're talking about a medical supervisor, you talk about for them itself it's a pandemic again. It is an uncertainty for anybody else. Got it? Right? So in this time of situations, you know, when when we are upset, the same upset uh, the person, senior most person or the person whom we expect to be role model is also accepting. So how are we going to look into that? That's what I said. When we have a problem, it is not only this pandemic. For any problem. You know, uh, it's not we need to focus only on change in the problem. It can be change in the perspective also. How positive we are about the changes. It's okay to feel low about it. And um, again, when we talk about it, and the concept to buy the self-care is something which is, I really liked it. The concept which talks more about the resilience. In social work also, we see that we are moved forward from problem-solving model into a strength-based model. All right. Problem solving model is something, you know, looks around the problem or something looks around the uh, who is the role model, looks around the environment for things to change. Whereas the strength based, you know, something talks about your internal self. All right. In the problem solving model, you know, number one, you know, you will be looking for changes outside. You will be looking for motivations outside. You're looking for something which is outside. All right. So that as an individual, you can move forward in life. Whereas in strength-based model, it is not much, it's not about problem, it's about, you know, how to maintain yourself, how are we going to be strengthen yourself so that any problem that you comes, you're already prepared. All right. So in fact, the question that you asked, you know, in, in this case is when you don't have a support from people, when you don't, uh, uh, what I'm saying, you know, how are you supporting yourself? That's the first question. When you have a problem, you're taking time for yourself, you're giving time for your emotion, you're giving time to express it out, you're giving time to take care of yourself. When you're not uh, taking time to support yourself, definitely we have no rights to expect support from others. That is something, the rule of you know, life that I would say. First, you need to take care of yourself. And, uh, and again, when it comes to role model, probably, you know, this is what my little experience with that, you know, even that should be a crisis for others as well. So uh, we cannot expect people. And again, self-care is something that, you know, we have been slowly talking about the younger generation. Now we are talking about it. Probably this concept I'm hearing for last five years. Before that, you know, we have not heard about it. Probably we did not have huge tensions. Now every day the problems is new, especially when the pandemic comes, is the entire life is toxic. You know, the roles and responsibility, our routine has changed and everything. Then the new crisis comes in. A new stress comes, then we need to adopt to the situation. But it's always better to look for how are we supporting ourselves than looking at how we others are going to support ourselves. Thank you, ma'am. 
The next question is from Chape Klovang. He states that self-care during the pandemic is often experienced as a challenge with anxiety and stress overshadowing him. And in, with such self-awareness, he wants to know ways to motivate himself towards self-care again. All right. Um, um, for instance, you know, uh, self-care is something that, as I said in, the, uh, in one of the slides, no? whether we like it or not, you know, this pandemic we are forced to spend much time with ourselves all right so consciously you know with the little of contact we are spending time either uh, by doing what we like it or either we are forced to doing what we don't like it or something as a responsibility and um, one thing that uh, during the pandemic as a self-care strategy we can do it to overcome the challenges have a routine have a schedule have a schedule say for instance you know uh, initially uh, when this lockdown has come you know when i started doing uh, tele counseling to people people had various issues related to you know i i do this i do this but still i'm finding it very difficult to overcome i said are you having it as a routine schedule so that your psychologically your mind gets say for instance morning wake up you have this meditation time for half an hour, then you routine two hours, it's always a social time. So you talk with people or do something and then one hour it's personal by routine. It seems like, you know, it's a basic thing, but I will tell you when you have a routine, psychologically your mind gets fixed about it. So that when you go and exercise, say for instance, if you're going to fix two hours for a social time, but if you're going to use your cell phone for more than three hours or four hours, you know, that the self-awareness comes in, which means you're using the you know, screen time for more than three hours or four hours. If you like it, you can set that as a routine. If you think that is all not a, uh, important for you, you want to reduce it out, you reduce it out. That's how, you know, having a routine especially having a schedule is something which helps you and when you have a schedule if you are an individual that you can have your schedule flexible if you are with a family no keep the schedule be informed to the family members which is very very important if you're living with your spouse it's important to tell your spouse about what is your uh, timings about it if you're with a family parents and uh, you know mothers and uh, you know your siblings has to know about your timing so that they get adjusted to it. Let's say, for instance, we are going to have a family timing for 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. If that is your personal timing, definitely that's going to be a conflict that comes in. Then you cannot say, I'm not able to practice this because my family doesn't cooperate. You know, so it, it has to be, you know, uh, adjustable, adjusted with the family. So when you, uh, the best thing is have a screen, um, scheduled timing and have uh, at least one hour for your self-care. It can be part of anything. It can be uh, cooking your own dish for yourself, you know, or your family, it can be one, uh, you can put it as one hour so that you do it or uh, exercise half an hour that can be a self-care or uh, writing a journal for you that can be doing it or anything that you wanted to do it as your self-care strategy, include that self-care strategy as part of your routine that stick, stick it on your table or wherever or in your phone. Every day when you wake up, you wanted to look into the screen time so that every night when you sleep, you wanted to look into your uh, thing and um, if you can do it for a week time, definitely you will notice your changes. And where is that your extra time is going on? Where is that your uh, timing is insufficient? And where is that you wanted to work on? What are the things that you can include? And which are the things you love doing it? Which, there are certain things that you say that, for instance, um, in all the routines, sometimes you feel very uh, tired and you would sleep for hours together. That is not in your routine at all. Then in, in next schedules, you know, when you prepare it, you need to put some nap time for yourself. How are you going to schedule it? Scheduling is something which helps you. And when you schedule it, keep sure, make sure that you inform it to your people who, uh, whom you are staying with. It can your parents, siblings, or your spouse, or, or any of your family members. Or if you're a hostile, keep your roommates informed. That is something which is very important. That helps you to break the challenge of self-care. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Ms. Neha. She states that sometimes people tend to be really fine with regards to their routine and lifetime lifestyle but they face breakdown all of a sudden how can we identify such issues when we are unaware of it can you repeat the question yes ma'am she states that uh, sometimes when people are uh, people seem fine with their routine and lifestyle but all of a sudden face a major breakdown how do we identify the underlying issue when we are not aware of what's the problem see first the one thing that we should understand our life, you know, we are not created as robots. 
our life is full of emotion which means we are going to have good emotions and bad emotions as well so in life you know it's okay to have stress it's okay to have crisis and when you experience crisis it's absolutely normal to experience crisis if you feel low absolutely normal and okay to feel low if you're crying it's absolutely normal to cry if you're uh, uh, upset about it for a week or time it's okay but if something is affecting your self care if something is affecting your routine say for instance you're not taking enough um, care for your personal bath or something personal times if you're not taking care of enough sleep if you're not taking good food if you're isolating if there are these certain indicators related to mental health you know if there are indicators as you are aware about it if you think that is happening and you allow that for a reason of one or two day that's fine and you have to come back about it that's where um, if the indicators pro- prolongs for a day or two that's where you need to uh, you know do a whistle blow about your life and you need to reflect on otherwise say for instance one among us you know if you think that you know one of your family member or or, or say that you know say for instance a sudden failure that comes in an exam you cannot say that i'm i practice self care so i will not worry about it i will comment about it in social media and i will laugh that's no meaning about it all right it's okay you can be sad about it it's okay absolutely normal you can share with friends that you are upset about it but are we able to resilient back and move forward probably this uh, person who asked this question you know on fourth day you know i'll be talking about you know how in what cases you will identify under what grounds you know resilience plays a normal role and again for resilience you know everybody this is so natural there is something that you know natural resilience the, the, for instance in some of the problems you know you will not do anything you be silent but things will automatically go away you will you will become resilient that something called natural resilience that is comes in so you need not to be panic about it unless and until it is really really disturbing for you to move forward in life that's how you can ask for it it's okay even in your uh, profession of helping you can ask for help you can tell them and when you ask for help um, it's better to ask for a, a person who you have really good trust otherwise you ask for someone who can again double the problem that's again a double trauma for you so it's ask for a professional help so that you know you get your professional help done so that you can move forward in life and and especially when you're doing counseling when you feel low it's okay i would advise you to take a break uh, probably a day so so that you know you get relaxed and come back and do it because without this positivity you say that you are a counselor your mind is full of your problem that is crisis and you're sitting you will definitely not listen or understand counseling is about 90 percentage of listening and understanding when your mind is full thinking about your problem the listening there is no there is no there is no empty and there is no there is no free mind to re- receive any information because you are already overloaded with your emotions so in that case the time that is spent for the counselor is not advisable and the time that is spent for the client is not also beneficiary and the organization is not also going to get a credit all right so in that way it's all advisable to take, take a break or one hour or two hours a break to get yourself relax talk for a, ask for a help or do any of the simple thing i would tell you say for instance in the initial days when i was working with um, hiv uh, women infected and affected with hiv or people living with hiv aids you know overloaded with emotions people uh, new cases when they know about uh, you know hiv they come and you know, as i do counseling with they feel very overburdened so there you cannot go go take a break and come back because sometimes you know i'll be put in uh, wards in um, gh for thursdays alone to meet this client and uh, bring them back to uh, the organization that i working with positive women network so in those cases you know the simple thing that uh, my uh, uh, supervisor will say you know take a breathing exercise so when you breathe in you know so when you when you consciously breathe in through your nose and breathe out to your mouth all right so for say for instance when you breathe in um, uh, at count you know 1 2 3 4 breathe in and then breathe out when you breathe in your tummy has to come out when you breathe out you know it has to go in so look into the watching pattern consciously do this if you can do it for 10 times that that that's a huge relaxation that can be done during the work time when you are having the stress thank you so much yes. for that tip mom uh, the next question is from ms watsala she states that homemakers who do self care are look different due to the social conditioning that is attached to them that they are meant to serve others and they develop a guilt when they are not able to do something for others and take time for themselves can you please share your view on this 
uh, first thing you know there is uh, uh, when the homemakers you know uh, where on what guns i don't know somehow the culture has put that in a trend you know uh, they are the bigger contributors only thing is you know economically that they not been rewarded uh, if the us policy like that comes to india you know if the homemakers and you know, the caregiving caretaking work has to be a paid work you know i'm sure the biggest contribution to this economy to the will be the work the housewives credit goes to them especially but one thing you know uh, we need to talk about it um is definitely there's a difference is there say for instance if you uh, um, uh, while practicing with the gym you know um, a few of the uh, women come and do it so uh, in the uh, entrance list you know they will say um, uh, working women or housewife so in the housewife you know when they write it then they'll say the time allotted for them is only in the noon time for all the working women's timing will be in the early mornings and uh, uh, we know late nights you know so when you look into that people will ask you know uh for a housewife already they are working why they have to come to gym or why they have to come in i definitely understand that's a perspective change that has been in the society and the work that has been done caring job that has been done in the houses gets very very least recognition and um, one thing that we need to understand you know um as we talk about this hormones of uh, dopamine you know accomplishing the task you know there's always a woman keeps up a task and they start accomplishing and that's how we say that you know when a woman cooks you know when the food is good you know even the small appreciation that you give it that's a motivation factor in fact they, when they did a, uh, a study a comparative study on mental health among working women and uh, housewife you know they uh, they found that you know the housewife the mental health among you know women who are in the house you know taking care of the job is strong than the working women why that you know the small acknowledgement some get it and some rarely don't get it and uh, what happens with the housewife you know they don't have an expectation so when they don't have an expectation they at least bothered about it whereas the working women they have got a high expectation this has to be done this has to be done. when the expectation is not fulfilled then again the crisis of the stress comes in but as a working women as a woman at home there's one tip that i would say it that is also a job that is also your responsibility that also you do it but it is, doesn't mean that you can compromise on your health this is very important that what watsala has pointed out you know the plight of you know housewife is is really difficult and that has to be given an importance and self care doesn't negotiate for uh, different aspect for working women as for a housewife self care is for everybody as mental health is for everybody it applies for everyone so it is important how we take time for yourself is very important and nowadays i see a lot of people come out and speak about it and this is where it is very important as a uh, housewife though your your routine work you see that you know so much of responsibilities are there but take care of yourself because you're you you're you're the sole important person in the house when you're taking care of others there can be a concept of compassion fatigue that can come in compassion fatigue is something you are you compassionate about everything you work over a point of you are overburdened one point of time and your compassion level goes down you get fatigue about it because how long i have been doing it how long i have been doing it that comes to a stagnation point that's how you need to realize about it so self care is so important and unfortunately i also regret that in some cultures you know the caretaking work is not given much importance as they do the economic contribution to the country so i i hope in coming days you know something that comes as an uh, acknowledging by economy uh, for the paid work for the caregivers you know otherwise you know things are not going to uh, come into the limelight they are they are really really contributing a lot but doesn't mean that they can compromise on the self care thank you ma'am the last question for the session is can you please state or mention some tips to stay focused on self care uh, to make it as a routine rather than just visiting visiting it when there is you know uh, stress or when it is needed okay say for instance um, uh, there are five self cares uh, um, dimensions are there uh, if in each dimensions if one can take two aspects or one aspect say for instance in physical if you can have not necessarily somebody say for instance person like me physical health care uh, exercising is very difficult so probably you can opt for a 10 minutes of meditation all right or something on um, having a walk uh, not as a physical uh, uh, you know just as a 10 minutes but keep that as a routine 
even if you if you're not able to walk for 45 minutes 30 minutes that's fine but if you can do a mindful walking just for 10 minutes keep that as a routine and fix the timing 7 to 7 10 every day invariably you walk it even if it is a 7 minutes keep it as 7 to 7 7 all right keep that as a routine and do it so let the body understand that let, let, let the thing that comes from psychology and the psychological mind and the physical health okay okay this is the time that we will do it Sometimes you'll say that, you know, how much ever you do it, you know, if it is a uh, food time, you know, you, you get, you, your physical body gives you an alert that day you're feeling hungry. There's a psychological connection that happens. With. Let's bring that routine in our uh, uh, psycho and soma. All right. So in that way, you know, fix anything. Say, for instance, it can be related to your physical health. Sometimes it can be your exercise that you can fix in or the meditation or sometimes you're good in yoga, you can fix it. 10 day, 10 minutes for that. And for the psychological health, it can be uh, reflection time. Uh, as I do it, you know, every day before I go to sleep, you know, 10 minutes before sleeping, you know, definitely I will consciously desire, uh, you know, think about reflecting on morning, what I did, what I had, and know whom I spoke to. Did I hurt someone doing it or someone hurt me? Why did this happen? What could I have avoided? Definitely, you know, um, it's been, I'm, I'm practicing for more than six to seven uh, years, even before self-care, I do it um, as part of before going to sleep, you know, what all things has happened so that, you know, that can be, that really, really helps a lot. Say, for instance, if you would have done it uh, unconsciously, probably you can rectify it a day or so. If something that comes to your mind, which means you have, you have not intentionally did that. Reflection time is something that you can do it and some 10 minutes for your social time. I'm sure everybody would have, uh, you know, hours together for a social time. Is that your personal social time? Say for instance, are you sharing something that you wanted to really convey to the people? Is that it can be some DP post that you wanted to post it to your friends about something on um, suicidal, no, uh, you know, uh, prevention awareness about suicide, something on COVID uh, information that you want to share it. Something that you wanted to contribute to the society, something that you think that will add value to people. Can you do that? You know, that is, or, or you can schedule that timing. And something called, you know, maintaining your interpersonal relationship. Talk, you know, uh, can you talk to your family members? I'm sure, you know, most of the people, you know, when they, the biggest problem with them staying with the family because they have never had this habit of spending with their family members. That is a huge trauma that instance, especially people are facing it. They are happy in spending time with their friends, not with their families. You know, now that the things have changed, you no, know, uh, um, having a correct balance between work, family, and you know, for the friends, you know, have the uh, timing for uh, interpersonal relationship. Talk to with people. Um, uh, I will always say, you know, um, in all the conversation, have these three golden words. Please, um, you know, use the word please. Thank you and sorry. You know, if, if these three things can be, if you want to ask any help, always use the word please so that it will please people to help you. It's okay that you can do it. If you have did something, you know, it's okay to ask the first person to ask sorry and that can do it. If somebody did that, it, it is very important to be grateful. Say thank you to them. So it can be a small thing that can add value to it. Okay, add that in your small communications uh, wherever you do it. So this is this will help you to maintain your interpersonal relationships. Again, working with your colleagues, very important to use all these things. It can be your senior, it can be your junior, it can be your supervisor. It's very important to have these things because, you know, uh, um, my, my senior boss will say that, you know, with the colleagues will say that, you know, Damon will have this, uh, that when she asked for help, nobody could say no. No, because, you know, we put it that in a way, it can be a smartness also, all right? But, you know, we should work in a way that, you know, ask these words, you know, please, sorry and thank you becomes adds a lot of values to that it's okay even if they are your student or even if they are colleagues or in something use this word as a small tip to maintain a very strong interpersonal relationships these are the small aspect and in tomorrow probably sir is going to more uh, deep um, uh, deal with that each dimensions for physical dimensions what to be done for psychological dimensions what to be done so I'm not going to um, I'm not going to unwrap uh, the session that what Sarah is going to do it. This is a simple tip that because somebody asked me, and the bingo chat is also something that you do, and uh, the wheel, uh, the um, self care wheel is something very interesting. You can uh, have that self care wheel for yourself. You can design it. This page can be edited. Uh, this 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 is something that you can have it. You can choose uh, in physical. You can choose to. In psychological too, and in emotional too, and in spiritual too, 
in personal too and then uh, professional too you can choose any two of them start practicing it for somebody who doesn't that's how i do it somebody who doesn't do it take that and run it and sometimes you can do your own rating which is the self care that you are giving to so much importance let's say for each one of them you can give one mark how much is it for in self house uh, safe housing regular medical care health uh, eat healthy idle eat for each one of them you can give one mark and see which of the dimensions you are giving much importance which you give zero importance you know that's where you need to work out you need to work out and think about it when i did this you know the physical care is something which i've given very very least important and two years before now slowly we are all working on it and still working on it this is something that um, everybody can practice it and which is easy thank you so much ma'am uh, i request you to give the closing remarks for the session um i think i've uh, spoken pretty much uh, enough um uh, to uh, to conclude this you know as i said you know self care is very very important aspect uh, we have been doing a lot we have been practicing a lot are we consciously doing it so that is one thing that i want to reinforce reinforce to the group um this is not like that this is not just be a class that you have attended or session that you have attended please you know i wanted uh, it would be a real success if few people at least a 10 percentage of people who have been taken about it and start practicing it you will definitely see results in your workplace it is not only a results for yourself you are also doing a major contribution to the society and for the field of social work or for the field whichever you are in so um, break this um, break this you know myth related to self care as mental health is for equally for everyone it is very important i think self care is equally important start practicing it you will um, today we are just giving this um, handouts and um, materials uh, scales on professional uh, self care scale you can rate the scale and if you something is uh, really wounding you uh, to work on it definitely work on it our contact numbers are there Uh, feel free to ask us and write us related to strategies related to it and stay tuned with us in coming days in all six days and um, self care is very important it is not only for social workers it is applicable for anybody else just because for any human is prone to have a crisis it's okay to have a crisis move on in life self care is one of the important strategy that it needs to be we have been practicing out only in recent days we have been speaking about it so which is so much in our culture so much in our emotion so much in our daily living we have started talking about it let's not stop only by talking about it let's consciously practice about it and uh, this would be my closing remarks for it and um, when clients come to us with so much of expectations let's not disappoint them by being not being taking care of ourselves let's take care of ourselves being a sound mind person so we have been we need to have a spirit of sound mind you know so it's important for us to search for a sound mind that comes from self care spirit of sound mind so spirit of love and spirit of compassion is very very important and we should search where that comes from and self care gives that and uh, thank you so much for everyone